but but real quick um because we probably got about like 20 minutes left i want to get into your thoughts on insects because uh yeah. this will be interesting because um i feel like half the vegans out there uh when i ask questions like are you okay with driving even though it's going to kill insects um a lot of them will say like uh they don't even view insects as mattering um but as soon as they get challenged with the idea of not eating honey because it affects an insect's life um bees then uh Anyways, it just becomes, uh, it's, a, it's a complicated topic that uh, when talked about in the right way, it seems like it's not complicated, but you, okay, so you have a company and that yeah. company involves uh, eating yeah. insects. So yeah. yeah. I also in. have a background in entomology, so insect science. In, not, I didn't really? study specifically, but I had, uh, I've worked in multiple different research labs with things like bed bugs, mosquitoes, aphids, like all sorts of stuff. So, uh, okay. Well, my, I don't even know where to start. You just tell me, you tell me where to start. Uh, uh, personally, I feel like insects have a level of sentience. I think that's relatively obvious if you study them well enough. Um, I think my concern, well, not my concern, but some of the caveats that I'd like to say up front is that I feel like their experience of pain is probably significantly different to how many other organisms experience pain. So uh, when we think about farming insects, I think actually in terms of uh, specifically physical pain, I think it's actually quite difficult to make them go through something like that. Whereas with a cat or with a pig in a firing crate or something, for example, clearly they're going to be going through physical pain. Um, uh, so just to give you some understanding, the company uh, uses a farm that farms insects, predominantly it was for reptile feed, but now we've repurposed it for consumption. And we turn those insects, so they're farmed in indoors, in large heated rooms, um, inside crates effectively with loads of holes and stuff for them to hide in and run around with that. Um, we then put them into a freezer. They effectively go um, to sleep as if it was winter time. So when in cold conditions, they go into hibernation. So they're asleep whilst they die. Um, so unconscious. Um, so the, the killing method is relatively pain-free. Um, okay. Well, it is pain-free. Um, I think a lot of people, the, the question of whether or not you should drive your car, I think a lot of vegans, um, it, it completely depends on why uh, reasons why people are vegans about what their views on insects. I think a lot of people think um, it's still okay to drive your car because um, there are just like certain allowances you have to give to be able to live a relatively happy life. And like there is a tie up between the insects, the amount of insects you're killing driving your car versus the happiness that you are getting in your in your existence. And I think a lot of vegans that trade off is just too different, and like they'd much prefer to be able to have the freedom to be able to drive the car. Um, uh, the other things are when you speak about um, honey, for example, there is implications on the natural environment again, and breeding bees to, to make honey actually damages local bee populations, which is really important for pollination of crops and all sorts of other plants and ecosystem services. So I think for a lot of people, it's tied up with also sustainability in their veganism. Um, why I personally think, so I believe that insects have sentience, um, why I believe that actually there is a moral argument for farming the insects to kill them and instead of just eating plants, because obviously by farming plants that are then fed to insects, we are increasing the amount of insects that are killed to some extent, um, in the same way that animals are. So with with most cricket farms you find around the world, they're fed grains much in the way that cattle would be. So if you're spraying pesticides on a soy field, that sort that you're killing a bunch of insects there and then you're feeding that grain to insects which we you will then which are farmed and then you will kill so the total number of insects you're farming uh you're, you're killing is actually large um mm. i think in, in that system the, the way that i uh the moral case that i have for it is if you were to feed insects on uh, waste products from um plant farm, farming let's say it's a pea husks or other material let's say uh <laughs> If spent grain um, from breweries, for example, I don't know if beers are technically vegan because it's probably unnecessary for uh, health. I don't know what your views are on that, but um, uh, that can be a bonus, the bonus question. Um, mm -hmm. But let's say that you have all these waste potential food products that could be fed to insects. My argument is that by feeding directly to insects, what you're doing is actually killing a smaller amount of insects than if you were to go out and farm the same amount of food by spraying, and because you would have to be spraying pesticides that would kill insects. So I think my concern is by um, by not utilizing that plant material, plant waste material um, and converting it into a nutritious food source like, like insects, 
you're actually having to go out and farm more farm farms, which will then inherently kill more insects because you're having to use pesticides. Regardless of it, if it's organic or not, you're still having to use pesticides that aren't kill mm. insects. They're just using what methods that aren't as impactful on the rest of the ecosystem. Um, mm. the, the arguments that I've thought about against my position would be, why not just use that waste product from the agricultural field for something else? I think my concern is that a lot of the products that we're that you get from those systems aren't eaten for a reason. It's usually because they're not particularly palatable or edible by humans, um, or they have mm -hmm. to be uh, significantly processed through some whatever methodology, extrusion, whatever it is, to make them palatable and consumable for humans. Um, and I don't believe that there's a good case for health um, with these kinds of products. So um, if you're mm -hmm. turning pea husks, for example, um, turning into a powder, then turning into a burger or turning into an energy bar, for example. I don't believe that that has, I think that has negative effects on um, gut health, personal health, and therefore mental health um, for humans. So I think there is an argument to say that insects are a good natural way to get more food out of the farm agriculture that we have in the UK or around the world. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that, any of that makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested to get your thoughts on it. Yeah, so I mean, I, I don't know um, the detail exactly in um, the outcome of the crops and feeding it to the insects or whatever. But no, I, I followed, I followed that, and I, I think, I think it's interesting. I, it's complicated because I, I try to imagine a couple different situations. So, so there, there's situations where we have to rely on experts, and then where we don't. So if uh, if before science uh, even became a thing, before there were scientific methods um, to figuring out different things about how brains work and whatnot, um, say I was around 300 years ago, I would have recognized like a, an animal that like got hurt, like got stabbed or something, or like broke a leg. I would recognize this thing is something like me. It's uh, eyes, ears. Um, it, it, the blood comes out of it and it makes noises. Um, at that point, if, uh, without like scientific methods, um, sh showing me what experts might think, I might not assume that, uh, things that live in the ocean are, um, like feel anything. If a fish can't make a noise or whine, if it's pulled out of the water. Um, so same thing would go for insects. And so I, um, I think it's interesting to um, to look at that element, but then when we can, uh, when not that I think we should test on animals, but when, um, however, scientists uh, can test uh, reactions um, to how it, uh, different stimuli and how the brain work and all this stuff um, to to find out like, oh, okay, we think this thing is sentient, we don't think this is like it. It seems like the people go back and forth, and now lobsters are thought to be sentient where they weren't maybe 10 years ago. And uh, so there's different uh, methods to figuring out these things. At some point, I might be convinced that there's a high enough sentience level for how I value sentience to care about insects. And at this point, I don't. And so if they are, if they are nutritious, um, it's kind of weird because like depending on what culture you're in and how you were raised, you're, you're, used to thinking of things as like gross or not gross, but yeah. obviously none of that matters in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. So I don't know if I could um, convince myself to eat insects, but um, I'm perfectly accepting of them not existing. And especially I didn't know anything about the idea of changing the temperature makes them go into hibernation. The, the fact that you can do it in a way where there's no suffering or minimal suffering to where they just, they did exist and now they don't exist. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not, um, not against that. So I guess I don't have too many thoughts, but it made me think of a question to ask you. You were talking about the bee thing where, um, you know, um, farming bees has a negative impact on the, the uh, ecosystem and whatnot, but you as a vegan that is accepting of eating insects, if bees were, if there are plenty of bees, and let's say they're just as nutritious to eat as other insects, I'm, I don't know if they are, they seem kind of fuzzy, um, <laughs> but let, let's say that there is no environmental impact and um, that they weren't even being farmed or anything, that we just figured out a way to set up, I guess this might seem like farming, but instead of having to go out into the wild to find their honey, if we set up boxes that they happen to like, but we don't go and move things around or whatever, 
And uh, the bees go, they make their honey, and you can also set up another box where they go into, and then you make it cold, and then they hibernate, and then that's how they die, and then they can be eaten. Would you say that in that case, in if if uh, the world had changed to there not being a shortage of bees and we can treat them just like other insects, would it be morally acceptable to eat that honey? Um, it's completely devoid of the environmental impact. Um, yeah. Uh, really difficult. I'm leaning towards maybe no. Um, and the reason why I think it's different is because I would be of the position that if we had a completely plant-based system that was indoors, vertical farm, that didn't that you made use of every single bio waste that we had um, available in the plant system, I don't know if it would be necessary to farm insects. Um, I don't see okay. what it might be permissible to to farm the bees, but I just don't think it would be necessary to do that. Okay. Well, okay. So what about, um, crickets? I don't know much about birth. I'm guessing it's a lar larva situation. I don't really know, it's but, um, yeah, yeah. okay. So let's say, so you have, how long are, do the crickets exist in your facility before they go into hibernation? Uh, six weeks, which is just over 50% of the lifespan. Okay. If during this six weeks, they happen to make some pile of stuff, that um let's say it tastes sweet um, <laughs> um where are you going with this and uh, then and then once you put them in hibernation and do what you do you could either throw away that that uh sweet stuff or you could you could consume it i think there's an easy answer to this it doesn't change what the future is we could still have a want for vertical farming or whatever yeah, yeah. um I, I think maybe that would be okay um okay. yeah i think maybe I, I think the issue I have with it is that I'm only seeing um, the in, currently the insect farming are based on waste as a way of reducing insect suffering. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, if we there would be no reason to farm the bees. Oh, I guess if we were okay, it would, no. I understand what you're saying. Basically, what you're saying is if there was a, exactly the same system for bees and we were able to farm, yeah, I would I would say, think it's okay to get the honey but only in the case that we're creating that system so that we can kill less bees in the natural environment. Yeah. Well, and on top of that, we'd want to make sure we're not making them suffer. If we remove yeah. their honey and yeah. then feed them um, an alternative sugar yeah, and that cuts their lifespan and then we hibernate them and kill them, then I would call that bad. But if we, if we don't remove their honey until they are removed from existence by the hibernation process and killing um, I think yeah. that seems acceptable in our current world. Yeah, I would also. So, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, this is interesting. I don't know if I have any uh, further questions about your, um, your insect um, company, but um, do you, so do you ship out product that goes to other companies that then use that in their, um, yeah. their, their products? Yeah. So the, the main so we make burgers, strips, mints, meatballs, all sorts of oh, stuff. Oh, you actually make them in your facility. You you do yeah. the you you um you do the hibernation uh, killing process, but then you also make the the products after that. No, so we we buy from a farm that does all the hibernation killing, farming, etc. We actually we're the ones that turn oh. the raw material into the products. So we're at the end consumer level. Um, so we're the ones. Hmm. Well, to some extent, we're the manufacturer. Um, we, we turn the crickets, frozen crickets or whatever it is, into burgers, mints, meat products that people can understand um, and can enjoy, hopefully, as much as they would do a traditional meat product. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, we sell those into restaurants, for example, um, places like, I don't know if you have, if you have Wagamama's over in the um, States. We were actually over in Las mm -hmm. Vegas recently with James Watt, the founder of BrewDog. He's only got about seven or eight BrewDogs in the US, but... Um, it's a large bar and they do, I think 50% of the menu is vegan. Um, hmm. Really cool company. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Do you, how often do you get called not vegan? Um, I'm only actually recently vegan. So I, after, oh, okay. so I was vegetarian for three and a half years. And but because we started, we, we actually had an episode 
uh, on a pod. We just started a podcast relatively recently talking about, and the first episode was talking about the ethics of eating animals. Um, and I think my position has changed since the episode because I've done more research into the moral case for eating, uh, for not eating animals. And mm-hmm. it's pushed me towards completely being vegan aside from insects. Um, hmm. uh, you said you were on a podcast or you started a podcast? We've started one on our, on our, for our company. Um, as a way to get oh, cool. and just talk about discuss, uh, topics that we're interested in. And the first one was yeah, it's around farming animals. So, um, hmm. Uh, sorry, what what was the question? I oh, I was just curious how many people uh, tell you you're not vegan. I guess oh, I'm not vegan, vegan for various um, yeah, reasons. Yeah, so it, ha- it hasn't happened too much recently, to be honest. Um, but okay. I'll be honest with you, the main hate that we get is actually just for people hating the idea of eating insects. Um, we're yeah. t- I don't know if you've heard about this, but we're tied up in this whole conspiracy around the WEF um, forcing people to eat bugs whilst they eat their steaks in their high towers. It's like a mm. whole thing um that we're tied up in which is i mean <laughs> it sounds a bit ridiculous but we've been getting like hate mail for it <laughs> yeah uh, that's wild. We're, we're just like two young dudes that are trying to make a positive impact on the planet and people's mm-hmm. health and, uh, that's um, awesome yeah it's, now, it's just a bit bit frustrating but uh, now are you a are you a, a chef of sorts or do you have people that work for you that um figure out the way to to produce the product like what 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 do you do uh so we're, we're a small team there's only four of us we've got a marketing person sales person and my co-founder and i so my co-founder is mainly on design strategy leading the team i'm mainly on products and operations so to be honest with you it's been we've had we've had one work with one chef one or two chefs before but at the moment my sole focus has been developing the recipes and products themselves um, it's not super complicated to be honest with you um it's basically just mincing the product up and adding flowers or whatever to bind it. Um, okay. Do you so, create the recipe yourself? Yeah. 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 Okay. Do, and do you get inspired by like other recipes? Do you look at like um, something like a, uh, an impossible burger or beyond burger and you see what ingredients they have, or are you just like, you kind of have known all this stuff for a while and you just have um, a good idea of what would, what, like, cause so, so with like a beef burger, it's just beef, but with yeah. insects, do you, are there cer- certain things you have to add to make it, b- uh, get a beef texture? A hundred percent. you do. Um, okay. and you don't have to answer any of these questions if you don't want to, I don't no, want to no, give no, your no, secrets away, no, 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 but I just got curious out of nowhere. So I'm not <laughs> even talking about veganism anymore. I'm just like curious. Uh, yeah. yeah. How, how do you turn uh, insects into a, into a burger? Um, it, it's done i mean there are so many technologies out there for creating different types of products and um, i don't know if you eat many meat alternatives that are on the market but uh, i try a... to only eat whole food um okay. i'm pretty yeah. bad at being healthy but i try to be um so i i try to make my own food i make like soups and uh you know various different things um but i try to i try to just do like fruits veggies nuts seeds um, recently I've been adding a little bit of bivalves into my diet and I'm, I'm kind of curious to hear your thoughts on that as well. So, uh, I mean, I'm kind of with you. I think the I, bivalves, bivalves are probably okay. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not against bivalves. I don't think, um, obviously I'm newly vegan, so I, this might change over time, but currently yeah. I don't really see an issue with it. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so we use similar processes as a lot of the other companies. You basically just add some flowers or other types of binders to the material to the blended crickets to, to make it give it some more texture. Um, mm. I would say that our ingredients list is significantly smaller. We're trying to mm. keep it as much as a natural whole food as possible. And there's oh, a lot cool. of products in the market. I mean, I think Beyond Burgers Burger ingredients list is like 30 different ingredients, ten of which are about yeah. uh, chemicals. So I think. Personally, I have a lot of concerns around unnatural foods and that, uh, mm-hmm. super ultra processed foods and the impact of that on, on people's health and therefore mental health um, and overall well being. So I, I'm trying to be a big proponent of more natural foods. I actually make my own tempeh as well um, in house, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. So another, you know, try and diversify my, my um, protein intake where I can. Um, now, do you, okay. How, how often do you eat insect products? Um, I mean, to be honest with you, pretty much every day because I'm developing a recipe, so I'm always trying and stuff. Um, oh, okay. always samples for restaurants and stuff. So 
uh, it's relatively frequently. I would say when I have a whole meal of it, um, it's maybe like one or two times a week. Um, but I'm eating it generally relatively regularly all the time anyway. Um, it's a bit one of those situations where um, you don't want to get high on your own supply because I'm having to make all of the meat, so I don't want to eat all of my stock because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have to spend all day making it more, making more of it. Um, we're not at the level where someone else is doing it for us yet, but when that happens, I think I'll eat it much more regularly because I'll have it cheaply. Um, gotcha. Okay. And so another thing that's kind of interesting. So, so me with the bivalve situation, I actually don't find them to taste good. I, mm -hmm. I figured out how to make them not taste horrible, but I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of like things that taste like the ocean, yeah. but I, but I do it because I, I'm convinced that they likely are not sentient. And if sentient at all, it's a small amount. And I haven't been convinced otherwise. And the health benefits. So the only supplements I consume as a vegan are um, DHA, uh, omega-3 from an algae source. Yeah. And um, and for those that don't know, um, the, the reason fish oil is so good for you is because the fish consume the algae and they get the DHA. So yeah. I'm just going to the source. And yeah. then so, so uh, DHA slash EPA and then um, and B12 and uh, vitamin D3. So those are the only three things I consume. Uh, as far as supplements go, and I'm not against supplements. They're great. I continue to take them, but knowing that these products that are bivalves have all three of those in crazy high doses and they're not sentient, I might as well like cover my bases. Yeah. And so I don't care that I don't enjoy the taste. So with insects, I don't know if I'd enjoy the taste or not. And I'm kind of nervous about the idea of it, <laughs> but, uh, is it, from your knowledge, and it seems like you have a lot of knowledge about insects, um, you have to completely remove yourself from the fact that you're this company owner and yeah. ignore the, the, the needing of a profit. Is there, is there information out there that there is a, uh, there's a lot of nutrients that comes from them that would make it, um, an important thing to add to the diet, or is it mostly a, a better product than other things that are destroying the environment? Uh, is is both. I think it's better than products that are destroying the environment. I think it's um, it, farming them is a more efficient, morally moral system currently, and also sustainable. To um, and I think uh, uh, nutritionally it is better because it's, uh, generally seventy percent of our product is natural whole food, which is blended crickets. Whereas if you compare that to a Beyond Burger, as I was saying earlier, most of it is ultra processed ingredients. That have got it. Generally, have been a powder at some point and they've added liquid to it to rehydrate it into something else, um, which isn't necessarily bad. But when you, that's all you're eating, I don't feel like it's the most healthy thing. Um, but uh, in terms of the nutritional makeup of insects, so crickets are generally thought to always have really high amounts of B12, so it's a, a clear win um, for yeah. adding it to a vegan diet. Um, it's also got things like it depends which formula and which type of insect you're eating, but um, crickets, for example, when dried, have more iron than spinach, more calcium than milk, more potassium than bananas, um, as much vitamin B12 as red meat. Um, they're really high in zinc. Uh, they've got sort of source of iron. Um, so there's like loads of nutrition that you can get from insects. Um, but again, it will depend on what they're fed, which type of insect species you're getting, and what form, whether it's dried or whether or not it's, it's fresh, etc. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, well, and then since crickets is the, the main source of uh, what you make, um, do you happen to know, like, so you said that for a while you studied um, insects in college. Um, University, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, uh, have you read, uh, are, there, are there a bunch of studies on the level of uh, sentience for, for crickets specifically? I think there are some studies on, I don't know about crickets, I, I doubt it for crickets specifically. I think a lot of the sentience has been done on smaller uh, things like fruit flies or more common model organisms. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that there is definitely data to show that, um, uh, for example, um, there is a point at which a fruit fly um, seems to ponder whether or not to move out of the way of a, of a hand that's moving closer to it um, mm -hmm. in studies. So I think there is some evidence to show that definitely they, they have some level of, of neural activity. There's something going on in there, um, which mm -hmm. is like the sentience. Um, I think where 
where it becomes confusing is that sometimes you might have a loc, I don't know, a, two locusts on a blade of grass, and one of them might be eating the leg of a, the other lo locust, and it won't can stop itself from eating grass. Like one of them will be eating grass, the other one will be mm. eating the leg, and it will continue to eat the grass. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Or you can. There's been experiments that show bumblebees of some type of bee um, with their legs trapped in a vice pretty mean but um they're given the option of a sedative and actually they don't they refrain from taking the sedative for whatever reason they might look like they want to push the vice off but for whatever reason they're not looking for pain suppressant um mm -hmm. they're just looking to get out of that situation so the way i kind of imagine it is if um if you're driving a car and someone slashes your tires you're going to be like oh crap i need to like sort that out but actually mm -hmm. there's not like you're not feeling pain you might be feeling stress about that situation but it's not the same mm -hmm. as feeling physical um yeah that's kind of how i try and imagine it yeah, yeah 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 um yeah yeah that that's very interesting um let's see okay so i do gotta hop off here in a second uh when we first started you said you had a, a mystery question maybe well it was a bonus that's... question i, I touched yeah. on it um which was okay. uh, um it, it was actually about this um the, the beer or like Vegans consuming foods that aren't necessary for health, but hmm. let's say kill loads of insects or kill potentially like non-target species uh, in the ecosystem. So beer, for example, or alcohol is not necessary for people's existence or health. It's actually detrimental hmm. to their health. Could you make hmm. an argument against anyone drinking alcohol? Because it doesn't, it kills organisms and it's not necessary for your health. Um, it would be interesting to get your perspective on that. Yeah. So I, I think... Um my thoughts on on that topic of like consuming things you don't need for your health that that can harm animals um i think it's bad for veganism itself i don't i think it uh it muddies the waters and it makes it hard for um people that are thinking about if they should be eating cows and pigs it makes yeah. it hard for them to like see this overall picture of what they should do but as far as us vegans that especially the ones interested in the the philosophy of it all if we're going to break down ideas and just think of what a perfect world's like or whatever, um, the most, I think the, the best argument about veganism is, are you doing it for taste pleasure? So yeah. if somebody is convinced by every study they see that the best thing to do is something like a paleo or keto diet where they can eat all these uh, healthy green vegetables, but then they also eat um, meat that doesn't have hormones in it and all this different stuff then um, that makes logical sense to me. If you are convinced as a human that wants to be, be healthy and thrive and live a great life, um, that makes sense to me. What doesn't make sense is if you, if you don't even think it's healthy, you're eating ice cream and you, you like there's dairy in it and this cow had to have like its baby ripped away from it and then it had to be pumped by a metal machine just so you can enjoy this taste for taste pleasure. So that's that's the best argument um, in my mind for why people should at very least stop eating for taste pleasure alone. Yeah. And I, the same thing would have to go for vegans. If, if you're eating ice cream, vegan ice cream, that there's no way you can be convinced is healthy for you. I mean, aside from if somebody blends up uh, dates and frozen bananas and does like what's called an ice cream. But yeah. if you just eat from the store, Ben and Jerry's, not a moo, whatever, I don't know what you guys have in the UK, yeah. but if you eat vegan ice cream from the store, you are doing that because when it goes in your mouth, your dopamine levels are going crazy and you love it. If that causes harm, that must be wrong. And I, and I, and I think I'm convinced that it must be wrong in a different way than saying, am I taking up too much land by my house being bigger than it needs to be? Yeah. Um, cause, cause, cause that, that is complicated in a, in a way that consuming something that you know is not necessary, isn't complicated. Yeah. Um, it's complicated in the sense that, um, it's hard for humans to pinpoint what an ideal diet should be, yeah. but any element of your diet that you know is not designed for health. Like you could convince yourself that you need to eat 2000 calories of fruits, veggies, nuts, and seeds. And that's what you think is the ideal diet. But then also you could convince yourself 
that actually um, 2,500 calories um, is probably better. Now that's 500 calorie difference and that's you truly figuring out what you think is better or worse um, for what you think your health would be should be. But there's probably not a world where an intelligent vegan that knows anything about health would say this vegan donut that's deep fried and covered with sugar, that this is doing anything other than taste pleasure. Yeah. So I hate the idea of picking people apart but um, if we were to pinpoint everything in life, is there a fact about a situation? There is no food you can consume that you aren't designing for optimal health that should be considered moral. And uh, I don't know if any human would ever get to that level, but I think we should all strive for it and we should all recognize it. Yeah. So, sorry for the okay. ramble. but No, no, no. That makes sense. I think that, that was kind of my... It was only something that I thought of recently, and I think I'd probably agree with you that um, I think that it is it is less moral or less moral than making another decision. But I think maybe mm -hmm. the burden of that is maybe a bit too extreme for most people to be able to actually act on in day to day lives. Yeah. Like you might, it's just an, a slightly unreasonable to some extent for them to, to expect. Mm -hmm. to do. I think I, that doesn't mean that you can't have the goal of doing that and making it where possible. But I think if we go yeah. to that granularity, I think that it's just quite difficult for people to live that way um mm -hmm. i thought the alcohol question was quite an interesting one because it's it's so detrimental potentially to people's <laughs> lives mm -hmm. but, uh, it's yeah. quite obvious that it's bad for you whereas with most dietary choices like you don't really know to the most extent what's actually going to be best for you your body is telling you what you crave and it's trying mm -hmm. to tell you to some extent with more like high fat soda foods uh, that are kind of hijacking your system um your body tells you if you want to eat like broccoli or fish one day or whatever it is because um, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's got an urge for a specific nutrient source. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I, and I think that calls a, a, a great point. And the same thing would would work with um, something more extreme that caused harm. Like if, if to create meth caused uh, animal death or whatever, yeah. then I, it would be known that not only is meth not good for you, but anybody can choose if they want to harm themselves, where I don't think um, it becomes moral to choose if you want something unhealthy for you is if something else is harmed in the process. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that's why I'm accepting of it. If somebody, if I was discussing veganism with somebody and they said they were convinced that what's healthiest for them is to eat, um, uh, three fish a week and one steak a week, as long as there's no like, uh, hormones added to it or whatever. Um, then I, I wouldn't have, I, I, I might have thoughts if they want to hear my thoughts, but I don't have thoughts that I would offer up on my own. I would just, I would just like maybe send them a study or say, Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing if studies in the future make this more concrete. Um, but, uh, but, but any choice that you could make that isn't to benefit your health, if, if, uh, if you're doing meth because you enjoy meth and it harms animals, then, then it's not good. So I, I would put the, I would put beer would be really high up for me, but anything processed, and this might just be ignorance on my part. Cause I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think something processed means it's bad. We can create, uh, potentially especially hypothetically, we could create the most, the most healthy things for a human that are all processed. So yeah. something can be processed and fine, but, um, there's an uncertainty with the processed element. If something just naturally grows and it just grows that way and you consume it, if your brain tells you keep consuming this over consume this, eat 50 blackberries, eat 50 strawberries, just yeah. nonstop, then, um, I think it's clear the brain is telling you what it's evolved to do, where if we process things and we humans get so smart that we figure out how to remove sugar from things and process things, we are tricking our brains into thinking we desire it. And in some cases that might be good and in some it might be bad, but, uh, but we don't know where we do know with the, with the whole food, which is why I... I try to go that route, but obviously I'm glad of the invention of like B12 supplements and these yeah, non whole things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I, I think I agree. 